Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on our Deadpool Funko Pop character. In this section we'll be working on the swords and the eyelids and just generally tidying up the shape a bit. Do remember to check out the links in the description for other useful playlists from my channel and the links to my character course which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with rigging animation ready for a game engine. Okay so here's where we got up to last time and we're still in the texture painting workspace. I'm going to go back to the layout mode now and we're going to make the sword and just tidy a couple of things up. So I'll go to front view and we'll start with the sword so shift right click down the bottom here shift A to add and I'll add a cube. Now it seems strange to add a cube, you might think a cylinder, but as soon as you add the subdivision surface modifier to it, it all makes sense. So I'll scale this down to somewhere around there, which is sort of grip size, looking at the hand that is, and I'll go from here. So we'll add the subdivision surface modifier now, so across here, and subdivision surface modifier, and let's zoom in on that a touch, and into edit mode. I'll go to x-ray mode so we can grab that top face there, and extrude it upwards in the Z. I'll zoom out just a touch so I can see the hand and how thick I need to go. So G then Z, probably around there. And I'm going to use this edge loop here, so two to go to edge mode, Alt left click on that and G G to grab it down. And that could be my proximity loop or supporting loop. And Control R to create another loop cut and the proximity loop at the top there. So we've got a handle, let's just have a quick look and make sure that handle is about the right size for his hand. I mean, it is stylized, so we can have a slightly stylized sword as well. Back to front view with one, back to face mode, and let's select that top face, and extrude and then scale. So E then S straight away, to about there, E to extrude again, and that's the hilt. Let's come around to the top and I to inset, bring that in just a touch about there, scale that in the Y, and then the blade, so back to front view, E to extrude in the Z axis, and just as long as we think the blade needs to be. So probably somewhere around there. I'll just do a loop cut so we've got the proximity loop at the bottom as well. Might be a bit short. So back to face mode, G to grab in the Z, maybe up to somewhere like that. Okay, I'm gonna move this across really slightly to about there, do a loop cut in the middle, around there, G to grab and move that back. Okay, so we've got a gradual curve. I'm going to grab the top face again. So three to go to face mode, select that face, and let's turn on proportional editing, and I'll scale that down so that it goes to a bit of a point. That's looking fine. And then Control R to do another loop cut to sort of square it off at the end. Now, obviously that's very flat, so let's zoom in on that. Come around to the side here, select this one here, GG, to edge slide that down, and then this one here, GG, and edge slide that one down. Okay, it's gonna be very thick all the way up. So we'll grab that top face with proportional edit still on, scale in the Y, and pull that in. Now, if you don't know proportional edit, use the wheel to change the circle of influence, and you can see it affects the stuff around it as well as the individual face. That all looks good. It looks a bit blobby around the handle. We just need another loop cut in here, Control R, and that's our proximity loop helping us there, and maybe another one here, Control R, another one there. Okay, let's just have a quick look at that. It's a nice simple sword. We might want to go up in terms of the subdivisions and right click and shade smooth. And there we've got a katana or wakazashi. Probably needs a little bit of modification. I think the handle's a little bit thick. So three to go to face mode, select this one, control plus to go up and we'll just scale that, but not in the Z axis. I don't want proportional edit on anymore. O is the shortcut for that. So I can click up here or press O, scale, shift Z, bring that in just a touch. And I think that's a little bit. I probably ought to have some reference images for this. And it's a little bit thick but we can make some slight adjustments later on if we think it's necessary. Okay, now Deadpool's sword is black. So let's go across to UV editing, zoom in on the sword. Let's just come out a touch more. Let's select everything and press U to unwrap. We need to see our image in here. So let's get the Deadpool color image. There we go. And it's unwrapped our sword just there. Now notice I didn't mark any seams and notice it's overlapping lots of other UVs. If I come across to the material preview mode, Nothing's changed yet because we haven't given it this material. So I'll go back into object mode and just shift click on the body and control L and link the materials. And now you can see the UVs being affected. All we need to do, back to the sword, into edit mode, grab all the UVs, scale them right down and just put them on a black spot. So somewhere around there. Make sure it's something that you haven't got any plans of changing whatsoever. 
So this is eye patch. I don't think we're going to change that at all, so that's absolutely fine. You can come right down and it will all keep that black color, as you can see there. If you didn't have the correct color, you just have to find an empty space. So if I select everything in here and go to tab, you can see there's a lot of empty gaps and spaces. We could just drag it down into one of those and paint it black. So that's how you can add objects to your UVs. If it's an object that needs painting, it's much harder because you have to sort of split it up into these small areas. So it can be very tricky, but I've done that in the past and it does work. But it's one of those things you do if you've forgotten a small object or item or something. Okay, so that's the sword, that was simple enough. One other thing that we need is some eyelids to blink. So let's click on the eyes, zoom in on those. I'll go into edit mode and I'll select just one eye. So Alt A to deselect all, L to select the link there. And it's doing it by seam at the moment. So let's select that one at the top there as well, L. And then Shift D to duplicate and P to separate by selection. So we should have a duplicate right on top of the other. If I go into object mode now and select that, we've got that duplicate there. So I'll right click to undo that movement, round to side view with three and into X-ray mode. X-ray mode isn't available in material preview, so we have to go to solid mode for that one. Okay, so let's zoom in. I'll scale up very slightly so it overlaps the old one. And you can just see the old one just there. I'll go into edit mode with this, and I'm going to cut it in half. So I'll select that half there. So now I can press delete and delete those faces. I've got my eyelid here for blinking. Now I need to unwrap those and put them on a black area in my UV. So select all, U to unwrap and unwrap. Select all those UVs, scale them right down and put them on a black area. Now, if I go across to look dev, into object mode, you can see we've got one eyelid now. And if I press R then X, we've got an eyelid that can blink like this. And we'll rig that later on. We have to copy that across the other side, of course. So We'll create a mirror, use the head as the mirror object, and it's across the other side. Now there's a few other tiny areas I noticed earlier that need a bit of tidying up. So let's just have a look at those. So the wristband, you can see it digging in there. If I go to edit mode, that's a bit confusing. Let's turn off x-ray mode, there we go. And it's just this edge here. Let's go to edge mode and just manually pull that out. And also there's a red splodge there. Now if I select all that, and let's go to the UVs just here. You can see that the bleed was at two pixels when I did this one, and it's just touching there. And that's that red splodge across there from our solidify modifier. So I can go back to texture paint mode. I've got that wristband selected using the fill brush. Make sure it's black. Someone reminded me that these tools are up here as well. I completely forgot about that. And that's new to 2.82, I think. So you can just use the color up here, whereas I keep going over here. So make sure it's black. We'll just find that UV area again, the one that we were looking at. And when I press fill or left click, you can see it expands because if I scroll down here, I don't think that's available in this menu up the top here, is it? Is there an options? Ah, oh, there's the options as well, yep. So there's the bleed. <laughs> this is a lot nicer actually, this menu up here, but it is just the same as the menu down here as well. And of course I'm used to this one. Okay, so our character is almost ready for rigging. We just need to duplicate our sword. So I'll go back to layout mode, select on the sword and shift D to duplicate in the X axis. And we may as well put them in position now. So I'll go to front view and just put them roughly into position and side view and just get them very roughly where they need to be. Okay, so that's tidied our Deadpool up a little bit, ready for the rig. Remember to comment below with any thoughts you have. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.